Hello everyone. So hopefully you can hear me. I've got my air filters up pretty high. Um, we're getting ready to do sliding dovetails. So welcome back to another episode of the Happy Woodworker. Uh, I've got the bottom of my bread box out and I've pulled the plans out. You're getting bird's eye view. Looking at this the way I do. Um, I've pulled my plans out and I've kind of had a look at, okay, here's my side. My dovetail is going to be on my side and it's going to run the length of this. So if I switch over to the front and I start looking, if this edge right here is my board and that's this edge, um, my side is going to set down on this like so. I have one here and I'll have one over here. So our job is to decide where this is going to set so that I can run my dovetail track. So if I look at this, and I knew I drew this to each square represents a half an inch, I know I want a half an inch in from my edge. So 16 30 seconds, that's what I'm measuring with, it's 30 seconds here. I'm being precise today. There. We're going to find our mark. And I'm going to come in over on this side and do the same thing. Half an inch. Probably couldn't see that, but it's the same thing. I think I look out a square there, don't I? Did I get that right? Ah, I got that wrong. I was not in square. Things are moving on me. That looks better. Always important to have this edge against your edge. See, even good woodworkers have their moments. I tend to have a lot of moments. That's all right. I'll know what that is. Now, we're using three quarter inch stock. So I'm going to reset this to three quarters of an inch, which would be 24 30 seconds. Right there. I'm going to lay this down on my line. So my board is going to take up that much room. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Then we're going to put some lines in. Hopefully nice square ones. are going to sit. So for our dovetail track, we need to find the center of this. So half of a three-quarter inch board. Well, let's do some math in our heads. If I've got three quarters, I can subtract a quarter off each side, um, which leaves me a quarter in the middle. Half of a quarter is an eighth, so three-eighths is dead center. Three-eighths on my little scale here. Uh, if that's confusing, just pull out, down up to a quarter, one-eighth past a quarter, is three-eighths. So I'll do that. And I'll remark that line. This is the path 
that our bit needs to fall off to have that board dead centered where I want it. Again, if you're off by a sixteenth or something, somebody's probably not going to notice that. It'd actually be better to be off a sixteenth towards the inside, though. So we also need to decide what is the front of our piece and what is the back. Because this is laying flat on here. I want this big, huge piece to be the front, so my dovetail tracks are going to come this way. And then they're going to stop. This is what you're going to call a blind sliding dovetail. Uh, it's not going to come all the way through. So, how far do I need to stop? Well, my board is going to stop at least a half an inch from the edge, but I have had some modifications from my plan. So I'm going to come back at least a full inch and make a mark. Right there. So this is where my dovetail needs to stop. That's our stop point, an inch up from the bottom. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to turn this around. And we're going to match those lines to the back. And I can tell I've got those two sides squared to each other because my lines meet perfectly. I've got my lines marked out. I know I've got arrows here, so my dovetail track's going to come in this way. This is my side that's facing up. My board's joining from the top, so I know I've got to cut this side, so I've got to turn this board over to cut through. I hope that makes sense for everyone. Alright, so the next thing is I need a measurement from here to here, which should be one inch. If I just set that to one inch, what's going to happen? Well, let's make some marks and find out. I'm right down my edge where I can see. Center. You can see better than I can right now, so let me move the camera and come around here and see for myself. And I'll be right back. Okay, so we've got our lines marked in. We've got our fence. I've come back and set to an inch or close to it. Make sure that this is pushed in all the way. Make sure you're set up for a jointer. So my scales here are going to give me measurement to center of this. So one inch should put me dead center. Next, we need to set bit height. For that, what I'm going to do I want a half an inch dovetail track. So I'm going to set my combination square to a half an inch, tighten it down. Some of these routers do not have a zero clearance insert, which means they sit below the surface of your table. So I want to have my measurement over here, and then we will raise my bit until it hits this. So we're set to half an inch. 
to set that on my table. Nice where it's nice, flat, and flush. And then I'm going to raise my bit until it touches that. That is as soon as I get this down in all the way where it belongs. So now if I push up I'm too high and I can see a gap in this. Let's bring that down where it looks about right. That doesn't feel right either. I'm going to drop it back down. I'm going to set this where it's nice and flat. And my hand's probably in the way. But as soon as I feel it touch over here, I know I'm at height. Right there. Back it off just a little. I just felt it touch, so I know I'm at half an inch. Our measurement is going to stay right there throughout. Uh, even when we're cutting the actual dovetail, it's going to slide in the track. Our bit is not going to change height again. I'm going to make this simple for you. I'm going to try. Um, dovetails are one of those things people wonder, well, how do I do the mathematics to figure out, you know, uh, how large do I make my dovetail to fit into the, the track that I've cut? Honestly, trial and error is about the only thing I can tell you. I'm going to reset again so you guys get a better view. Okay. So, we've marked out our lines. We set our bit height. We have locked down our router. The next thing we have to do is figure out. I'm going to be feeding through this way. So where does this stop in order for me not to go past where I want? I need to mark some kind of line over here so I know where to stop. Um, alright. Let's bring out a C-clamp. We'll use it like a stop block. Matter of fact, I'll just put a stop block on there. C-clamps work good for this. Make sure our measurements are all locked down and tight. I'm still one inch to one inch. I believe we are ready to proceed. So I'm going to give you guys a different camera angle again because you're going to see better from the other side. Hearing protection is a must for this. Generally, goggles are a good idea, too. Got our mad scientist goggles. Clean the dust off before you put them on. You'll thank yourself later. Okay. Looking at my direction of feed. Setting that down. I'm flat against my fence. Here we go. Hello everyone. So it's important while we're uh, cutting your dovetails here, first make sure when you first come in that you're centered, which is what I'm doing there. Um, once you cut, it's too late. So make sure you have that bit for one last check for where you want it. Maintain forward pressure towards the fence. Uh, it's important to have a straight track here. So you have to maintain that pressure against the fence and then obviously you have to push into the bit. Uh, you're going to maintain that all the way through your cut and it, as you can see it's throwing out quite a bit of waste. Um, I actually stopped and didn't go all the way up to my stop block and I'm kind of glad that I did. Um, I ended up with an, about an inch and a half back set from my front edge which I decided to keep instead of going any further. Uh, just a slight modification to my plan. So, slow steady cut maintain that even pressure against the fence as you go through and I'm not going to show you the other side because it's the exact same thing so to keep this video short uh, we're just going to show this one and I will do another quick bit on cutting the actual dovetails probably in a separate video because this one's getting kind of long thanks for watching everyone and uh, we'll watch and see how I finish here
not quite there all the way because of the waste that was shooting out, but let's see how we did. Not bad. Not bad at all. If I wanted to, I could leave that there. So here's where I'm going to uh, kill the video off for this time around. Um, obviously, I had to set up to do the equivalent of a climbing cut to cut the other side. And like I said, I'm not going to show that one on video, but you guys get the idea. Thanks for watching. When we come back uh, in the next segment, we'll be cutting the actual dovetails that are going to fit that track. And hopefully that one will be a little bit shorter than this video because there's no uh, layout and setup for that. Thanks everyone. Have a great day and thanks for watching.